Hi, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. So, KDN Live put out version 21.12 and offers some very interesting things among them, some enhancements to motion tracking. Let's dig it out. Okay, so I'm Nate. Again, this is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I wanted to take a peek here at Caden Live version 21.12 and see what's new. There were some new things, and I'm going to focus today. There's, there's more than this, but I wanted to focus in on particularly the motion tracking enhancements. Now, I know motion tracking has been there since, I think, version 19. This is not brand new, but the models and the capabilities that they brought to that are. So let's look at that. All right, so starting off here then with what we've got, I'm going to drag these a little forward here so we can see them better, is I just started with a basic clip. And first thing you have to do, like any other effect, is go into the effects and then look up for the motion tracker uh, effect and then drag it onto the clip. Now, I've covered a, uh, a clips before. Go watch the video on how to do that and how to use them. That'll explain a lot more than what I'm going to do right now. But you drag it onto it. And immediately there's some options to take note of. First off, okay, this is gonna be blank. I've already done some work here, so picture it that way. You have to pick the Deceum model. That's important because the other ones aren't yet supported. If you go look in the uh, user information in the manual, they specify that you can only use Deceum. And even that comes with a few steps. So if we go look in the manual here, we can see a bit about how this fits into the new release. Yeah, it did come out in uh, one of the versions of 19 just for reference if you're interested uh it shows you what i was just showing you now some of the uh, the options here you have an analyze button we'll talk about that in a minute how to track all right so this is the good stuff down here the algorithms yeah these other models they're not there yet so they will be but for right now you have to use Dissium. all right and you could read about it there's actually some really interesting uh write-ups here about how it actually works, how it discriminates background from the thing you're tracking and making sure that it actually is motion and not something going on, um, how to discriminate between those two things. So it's very interesting. I'd recommend you read it if you have some time. But otherwise, this talks about how to set it up. And you have to do this whether you're in Linux or Windows, and there's very specific locations to park them in. You do have to create this new folder, OpenCV models, whether you're in Windows or Linux. Again, it mentions that down here. Um, these are hidden locations, so uh, make sure that you reveal them uh, by whatever operating system you're using, and then you have to download the three files into that new folder, okay? Now, some other caveats here that I'll mention. This worked right out of the box uh, for uh, Ubuntu, for Linux. No problems there. Windows, I noticed that when I initially set this up, downloaded the files, closed and open a couple of times, it would not work for me, or at least not, not immediately. Something about the way, I don't know if it was the state of my computer, to be fair, there may have been an update because Microsoft lately likes to do that without telling you. Um, so the, that could have been going on. It could have just been that it was in trying to engage a DLL for this p package, this software package in Windows that it didn't have in memory yet. And that may be why that after I rebooted my whole computer and came back in, that it finally started to work. So be aware in Windows, you might have to reboot because there's not, there seems to be kind of a need to load whatever it's using into memory before it becomes really alive. So be aware of that. All right, so back to the tool now. All right, so now we've dragged the effect on the motion tracker. You have to choose to see them. All right, you can actually play with the kind of shape you have and they can be resized and adjusted uh, with the four points. Um, you can't get more granular than that right now. It's, it's always in a four point system, but you can adjust to the, the thing in the video that you want to track, all right? Uh, you can play with the width of this a little bit, but I believe this is just more for reference. I don't know that that has any value in terms of how effectively it's going to analyze that. I think that's just for visual aesthetics and, and helpfulness if it helps you such. Again, with the color. Blurring is a little interesting in that 
you could implement um, kind of a censorship control uh, where if the thing you're tracking you want to be blurred out to be prevented from being seen on the video it's built right into this control here so you can use that uh, through the different options I did not because that's not what I'm demonstrating but you can do that if you want to now this would typically be an analyze button which it I've already analyzed it, so I don't see it now but it would be analyzed and it would take some time depending on the length of the clip to do frame by frame analysis because that's essentially what it's trying to do is discern the differences really at a pixel level between each each frame so that takes time <laughs> uh, depending on the length of the clip uh, that you have going on and also the the complexities of things that are happening the amount of motion that's going on in the background in the foreground um, it may impact that analysis um, and the ability of the model to discern those things so uh, those are factors that can affect how long it is but when everything is said and done it will actually auto generate the keyframes the things that moved within that relate to the object you've specified so that's really cool you get it all mapped and the fun part starts where you can actually use these and this is in the user manual by the way but i'm going to explain it uh, just so you can see it this button right here the three lines you use that and you copy the frames the clipboard and then up here i'm going to enable this object now this is just a graphic using the title tool, by the way, it's a very simple concept. What I can do is now I put, I just chose position in, in Zoom to demonstrate this, but I did, you, you could actually use really any effect uh, that you wanted to apply to motion in this case. But position and Zoom is kind of logical because it also relates to motion. So on here, I'm gonna use that same three lines button and now import the keyframes. In this, I just kept them all by default. I didn't really see a need to change them. Um, you may need to play with that. I haven't looked too deep into this part yet, but I kept the default for now. And here we go. We get all the keyframes mapped. Now, this is cool because it's going to relate that motion tracking to that effect. So it actually will keep pace with those positions. These keyframes are just recorded positions uh, as, long, you know, as well as effect data, but uh, it translates that way over in terms of... Uh, positioning on the frame so we can borrow that and really apply that to just about any effect that relates to this captured information across the board that's really cool <laughs> that is the basic premise and that's how it works you you could go back if you really wanted to to fine tune this later on because all the positional data is brought in and you could tweak it a little bit it's up to you but it does a lot of the work it shortcuts it heavily in this case and makes it that much more powerful so that's the idea all right so once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me seeing this and trying it out. There are other videos on using this, um, so go watch those and get a good sense of what else this tool can do for you. Cut in live. If you haven't had the opportunity to use it before, try it out. It is free. It is maintained by a fantastic group of developers who, who really work very hard to keep this in pace with industry tools. It performs very well when compared against things like Premiere and other industry standard things. If this was helpful for you, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, consider subscribing if you haven't done that already and leave a comment. Ask a question, not just for me, but for the whole community. Uh, I love it when I see people sharing their experiences and helping each other because that's what this is all about. It's about a community of learning. Thank you so much. I will see you at the next video.